welcome to Short Arts. This is my take on Map Kibera, an ongoing project started in 2009 by the Map Kibera Trust. It maps Kenya's largest slum using OpenStreetMap and other sources to produce a locally generated map that reflects the unofficial infrastructure in that area. The project is important for a number of reasons, from its practical use value to it being produced by the residents of Kibera. However, I will be focusing on how this project exposes the ideology of mapping. The best way to demonstrate this is to compare Map Kibera with Google's own map of the area. The difference is obvious. Google's map is a void, a shaded zone of indeterminacy. This zone is home to at least 250,000 people, and it's crowded with churches, schools, restaurants, and community centers. We can understand Google's void in a few ways. Let's look at it from Google's perspective first. In 2013, Google claimed its goal was to produce a perfect map of the world. At first glance, we can see that Map Kibera demonstrates just how far off Google is from achieving this goal. However, let's invert this and actually say that Map Kibera shows Google has achieved the perfect map of the world. Google's zone of indeterminacy of Kibera is perfect under the ideology through which Google maps. Google, as a for-profit corporation, makes its money by connecting people to businesses. The map for Google is a product of this capitalist relation. It identifies businesses and offers the quickest way for people to get there. The perfect map is that which does this as efficiently and as accurately as possible. There are no official businesses in Kibera. There are no tourist attractions, no shortcuts for rideshare companies. In a very real sense, Google sees nothing. The power of ideology is that things can become invisible. This power of invisibility makes the world's poorest disappear, but paradoxically, invisibility can also be bought by the world's richest. If we look at the maps of islands owned by billionaires, we can see this same emptiness. Here, Google voids these islands to preserve the privacy of its top shareholders and customers. Their island escapes escape Google's perfect map too. Maps and mapping are always ideological. Their critical value is that we can turn to them to recognize ideological structures. Just as European colonizing powers placed Europe at the non-existent center of a globe, establishing north as up and scaling down southern continents, Google maps its perfect world. This is because mapping is not documentary, but productive. Mapping generates what it maps. Colonizers mapped coastlines to extract people and resources. Google maps businesses to extract commerce. Ultimately, this is why Google's claim to want to produce a perfect map is actually to map a world as it wants it to become. Its aim is not to change the map, but to change the world to fit the map. We can turn to a fable that both Lewis Carroll and Borges used to demonstrate this quality of mapping, or what postmodernists called the simulacra. In the fable, a queen orders a mapmaker to make a perfect one-to-one -one scale map of the kingdom. It is produced, but it's never rolled out across the land. The lamenting queen states that we now use the country itself as its own map, and I assure you it does nearly as well. The actual land is forced to be the map, to align to the ideology of the queen, the state, or the corporation. And in the queen's assessment, it does nearly as well. But there are moments where this doesn't align, where the land and the people fight the map. Projects like Map Kibera pit different mapping ideologies against each other. Ultimately, Map Kibera is about a fight between maps. However, as we will see in other artworks, it also hints at the potential for the land and its people to become suddenly and radically visible. Because they were and will always be there, even if we refuse to see them.